council page. How about that? It's preparing the live stream on the meeting. The meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Okay, so let's go on Facebook. It is streaming live. Everybody needs to mute their phone, please. It is live on Facebook. Yes. So can I get someone to go in and uh, and share this meeting on the Pines on the Pines Community Council page? Can someone do that? Okay, let's go on Facebook Live. You see it, Dr. Nichols showing? I see it showing. I see it showing on Facebook Live right now. But I want to share it to a page. Let's share it to the council page. Okay. Thank you. Let's go back out of here. They done switched up on me. Post. So someone go to the Pinehurst Community Council page and see if it's showing live on the Pinehurst Community Council page. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patience. I think we are ready to uh, rock and roll here. If everybody's here. Let's go ahead and get started. Can someone check to make sure that it is showing on the uh, right, his community yes, council? Yes, it is. Um, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yes, it is. Oh, thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Okay. But I am frozen. Can y'all see me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm on the wrong page. There's a lot going on here today, Patricia. I'm sorry, people, but we we are finally here live. Thank you very much for uh, being patient with us and getting started. We're gonna call this meeting to order. This is the uh, Pine Hills Community Council community meeting that we meet every month. Thank you for joining us in the Zoom room. And thank you all for watching Facebook Live and thank you for being patient with us uh, today. So we call the meeting to order. We can go ahead with our prayer and pledge of allegiance. So do we have no doctor, no uh, Pastor Joey? Uh, Mr. Noah, can you lead us in prayer and do the pledge of allegiance, please? I'll mute your phone. Yes, yes. Yes, Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us together here another time when we will be doing our business, dear Lord by ministering to our community, to what we do for them. Father God, we thank you for everyone who is here present and also for everyone that is also doing their work and not here tonight. We thank you, dear Lord, and we ask you to bless them, dear Lord, as they volunteer their time and their efforts and um, their family's time also. We pray that this meeting, dear Lord, will um, go smoothly, dear Lord, and with all the technical challenges that we do have, dear Lord, we bless you. We bless you and hope that this will be taken care of shortly. We thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Now, lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Noah, please. I'm looking for it. <laughs> I was looking for it. I pledge yeah. allegiance to the flag. Flag. Yeah. Yeah, the United States, States of America. 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 And to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which, for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and, and, justice, and justice for all. For all. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, again, for uh, being patient as we got started. Again, this is the Pine Hills Community Council meeting. Thank you, our board members, for being here today as well. And thank you for... Uh, for those that signed again for the first time, we're gonna move right ahead with our uh, with our meeting. If you on your if you're here and I know you're here, go ahead and mute your phones, please, and that'll be great. Thank you, Myra. Is that Myra has signed in? Thank you, Myra, for uh, mm -hmm. calling in. Thank you very much. So let's get approval of our last month meeting. Members of the council should have received a copy of the last month meeting. Did you receive your copy? Have you had up? Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that you received your copy. Had you had an opportunity to review your uh, the meetings minutes from last month? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Are there any corrections from a last month meeting? No, no. I move that we accept the uh, fun, uh, the, uh, the tr um, financial. Report. No, it's not financial. The second from last month. <laughs> Okay, it's been moved by uh, Ms. Van and second by Noah. 
Are yes. there interjections? Uh, no opposes. So the, the meeting will be stand approved as written. Thank you very much. Our next thing is to approve the treasury report. We did not send out a treasury report, but uh, let's see here. There is a treasury report, and here's a treasury report here. Can you see this treasury report? Yes. yes, it's good. Okay, good, 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 good. So, Ms. Van, please yeah. go to the treasury report. Okay, as of the month of end of April, we had $254.61 from dues uh, put into our uh, account. As of uh, year to date, we have had $1,238.41. That's all the income. For his expense, we had our liability insurance that was due uh, last month, which was $576. And then also last month, we had a $50 uh, payment out to, it says, as you look at the, at the bottom, it says others to Patricia Rump, I will use Cash App and for the flyers that we had for uh, Earth Day. So if you look at our total expense for the year, it's when $1,016.25. So on the bank, first of uh, April, we had $3,895.08. Our income was two fifty four sixty one. dollars Our expense was $626. And so at the end of the month, we have $3,523.69 in operating fund. We got one cent in our savings, which gives us a total now of $1,625.29. Our son trust is always going to be a month behind because I don't get the statement in time for the at the end of the month, but in the month of March, I mean, yeah, March, we got seven cents on our in our um, savings at SunTrust Bank. So they gave us seven thousand seven hundred eighty-three dollars and thirty-seven cents. So total funds that is on balance is twelve thousand nine hundred and thirty-two dollars and thirty-five cents. Are there any questions? I don't have any. So can we get an adoption of this treasury report? I move. I'll make a motion. Okay. <laughs> move by Noel, second by who? Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> so let's move on to, we, we did the call to order, the prayer, the pledge, the welcome, approval of the minutes, treasury report. So the president report, uh, my report is a brief report. I just wanna thank everyone again for being here. Thank our new members. As you saw on the treasury report, Ms. Van made a comment about there were uh, an income coming in and the income came in from members who signed up to the council. So I wanna thank those new members. If you're on the line with us in uh, on, on the Zoom call or if you are watching us Facebook Live, I wanna thank those new members who signed on the council within these last 30 days. So thank you very much. Uh, we also had a couple, we had one new business to sign in with the council as a business uh, member. So I wanna thank you, Pam, Pamela Cedaram, signed her business up uh, with the council. And thank you very much, Ms. Pam, for signing that up. And uh, that's it. I noticed we have one new person that's a, a member, Ms. Sally. This is my first time seeing you coming on, on Zoom but you have been a member with us for quite some time. So uh, thank you for joining us uh, with the Zoom live meeting here today. So that's it I have for the president report because I will talk more later on as we go into the committee's report. So that's it for the president report. Welcome our new members for coming on to the council. So we'll go into our, It's the sheriff, someone from the sheriff is here, Orange County Sheriff Department, someone from the Sheriff Department is here. No one from the Sheriff Department is here? Okay, no problem. So we'll move on to our, our, our Orange County Department, Mr. Uh, Dyson. Um, uh, Patricia, under yes. the Orange County Sheriff's Office, there was a, a shooting over the weekend of Evans High School. 
Um, it was Ed High School student. Yes. Okay. So um, I have not heard anything uh, other than the fact that uh, it happened, but I'm sure that everyone in Pine Hills is concerned. Was that um, uh, Commissioner Commissioner Regina Hill's niece? Yes. Was a different shooting? Yes. It was? Okay. No, that's the, that's the shooting that's been um, mentioned by Bertina. Uh, Mrs. Sandra, Fatme Hall. Yes, the shooting took place at the Wawa at the corner of um, Silver Star and John Young Parkway. Um, mm -hmm. It's not in Pine Hills. Um, that that's um, um, happened in District Five. That's actually the city, but that's not even so important. I just wanted to make sure that was um, understood. But this young lady was just coming from an event and with her friends. And um, as the news has mentioned, um, she was not the intended victim, if any at all. But when you start using the mm -hmm. gun, you know they're looking for a victim, right? So it's unfortunate. Um, honors. Um, Honor student at Evans High School. So we've done a moment of silence. Um, counseling is available. I don't know if anyone is on from Evans High School, but I just wanted to mention those things. Just a very, very sad situation. It is. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we'll move on to uh, Mr. Uh, Geisen. Uh, is um, there anything that we should be sending? Excuse me, one more thing. Is there anything, a note of and uh, a sympathy note or something to Commissioner Hill from the council? We can, if we agree to do, I mean, we can, we, we can send a card, a sympathy or something, yes. I will reach out to her. I think okay, very good. Thank you, Bettina. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any more discussion? Okay. Mr. Geisen? How you doing, Miss Patricia? Um, how's everybody? Can everybody hear me pretty good? Yes, yes, sir. I feel like I, I feel like I live on this thing now. Um, you know, working. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, thank you guys for having me here today. Uh, I am Geisen Bowler. I'm project manager with Orange County Capital Projects, and I am the one that's that's spearheading the new uh, multicultural community center that, that sits there on the corner of uh, State Road 50 and High Wassey, the old goodings. Everybody familiar with that? Um, yes. So I kind of wanted to give you, I believe I spoke with the with the council maybe about a year, maybe about six, seven or eight months ago. I'm not really sure. Um, yes. However, I wanted to give you guys an update as far as where we are and kind of where we're going. Um, we've had, uh, uh, we, we kind of broke this thing up into two phases. I don't know if anybody's been by there, yeah. um, but you see a lot of activity on the outside. Uh, yeah. What we're doing is we're, we're bringing services, uh, utility services into the to, to the actual building itself, we, you know, we have to put a fire line in for fire suppression systems and a new uh, water main in, a larger one, because it's going to facilitate a larger capacity. And um, we're just beautifying the shell of the building. And we're also doing some stuff on the inside as far as making it ready for our phase two. And um, so we're at we're at about 90 percent done with our phase one. And uh, we have designed our phase two and our phase two. And had I known, I would have uh, I would have had it available for you guys to see. But it's the interior build out of of that building, which is the community center portion of the of the building itself. Um, it's about seventeen thousand square feet. Um, it'll it'll it will have a uh, it will have a a, 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 um, a grand room in it, a very grand room that will be uh, that will be equipped with uh, any type of presentation you want to do, weddings, concerts. Anything inside of that inside of that area, we'll have uh, multi-purpose rooms in there. We'll have uh, conference rooms inside of there. We'll have a uh, a, a coffee a coffee section inside of there for for the uh, for our, our, for our, our visitors. We'll have uh, and there's also a um, an art exhibit that's going to be in there that um, we've searched the entire nation and we came up with a uh, 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 commission of who sat on that committee as well. We picked someone that there'll be a beautiful art exhibit that sits there as part of the building. Um, and I'm really, really excited about it. But I said all of that to say that uh, the solicitation for the interior build out with Orange County is going to be uh, in, within a week. Um, there's going to be a pre bid meeting the following week. And then we're looking for bids uh, for the, these contractors to bid on, on by June the 17th is, is the date that we'll, we'll know who's going to be doing the interior build out of that. Um, 
once we get through our procurement process and our contracts and getting approved through uh, the BCC, um, we should look to have somebody on board and we look to see activity starting out on the inside of the building in October, which has us um, possibly like early summer of 2022 is our grand opening for oh, the wow. facility. Hopefully that made all it made a bunch of sense. There's a lot of stuff going on, even as wordy as that was. It's a gazillion things going on that makes us get to this point. Deal with OUC, public work, blah 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 blah. You know, it, it's uh, it's been a labor of love, and, and I, I'm very very proud to build this building. I did I did Holden Heights building down in that community, and I'm super proud of that building, and I'm super proud of this building. Um, everything that all these other communities have within their community centers, we're going to have that in this community center, um, uh, and we'll, we'll be the envy of everyone once this thing gets uh, built. I promise you that. So is it a community center or a cultural center? Well, it's it's a cultural center, but it's it's a cultural community center. And the reason why it's cultural is it's just multicultural. It's uh, we want everybody to feel welcome and invited. And we went through our design. You'll see when we start to put the facade of the building on. You'll see the different colors that represent the different uh, you know ethnicities that are within the Pine Hills community. We took a lot of time to. Um, do some uh, assessments of the community and what's there, and you know, and you know, the, uh, the the Caribbean element is represented. You know, as far as holistically, it's not you know, it's not going to look like you're stepping into you know Haiti or stepping into Jamaica, but you'll see the influences there with the color scheme, the color patterns, uh, and that type of thing. And especially with the art, um, the art that that's going to be there as a permanent part of the facility. You'll you'll get that from, from that as well too. So it's it's something that you I, I'm, you're gonna be you'll you'll be you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, so is that what you're talking about? All these designs on that? Is this something on the outside, or are you just talking about the inside? We're talking I'm talking about throughout the building. Throughout the there, building. There, there's a, there's gonna be a new facade that's on there. Um, it'll be it'll be uh, lit at nighttime. You'll you'll be able to see it. Um. That entire corner is going to be lit up. Uh, we have LED lights that we put on the outside, but on the inside as well too. Like I said, the color pattern, the color schemes. You know what color the chairs are, what color the floor is, what color the walls are. Um, you know that type of influence. And then in our great multi-purpose room, you'll we'll have stuff hanging from the ceiling and colors that are in there. It, it's it'll be a very uh, it's, it'll be a very inviting place. Computer labs, all that stuff. Mr. Great. It's, 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 we, we, uh, it sounds wonderful, and I have been by the build, building and seeing kind of the changes that are taking place. Yes. Uh, I did have a question. Is, is it time for questions, or we want to let? Go ahead. Yeah, fire away. It's time, hold on. It's, it, yes, it is time for questions. If those that are familiar with your raise hand features uh, on your Zoom mm -hmm. icon down to the bottom. Click on that raise hand feature so we could be able to identify you that way, please. But go ahead and drop the nipple. I see you, you raised your hand quickly. So go ahead on. <laughs> done, done, I promise. Um, I did want to ask about the pedestrians' entry into the building. Um, and the building itself, it sits on the corner of Hiawassee there at Colonial. And then there's an entry on the side there by the church. Are we looking at possibly how, how are the pedestrians going to walk up that hill uh, to get into the cultural center since it is there's currently no access uh, for those walking perhaps from the bus stop right there um, on the Hiawassee side. You know what, um, I visited that building, uh, oh man, it seems like a gazillion times already. And you are absolutely right. They're, they're, um, uh, there's a lot of foot traffic that's there, but I don't really recall any um, any sidewalks or those type of, 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 uh, of uh, avenues for for pedestrians. I'll, I'll look into that. Let me look into that. Let me, let me look into that and see. At least we could put um, uh, some type of sidewalk coming up that side street, coming coming like I said by the church. Right. If, uh, if there's room available, let me take a look at that. I never, I guess that never really came up at all, even though we we acknowledge the the, uh, the foot traffic. But I'll I'll, uh, I'll make note of that. I, I mean, I utilize the entryway there from the church headed um, southbound into the shopping center there on the right side. Yes. And the pedestrians are actually in the street. Right. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they always are, yeah. The traffic and, and hopefully that center is going to be beautiful and I'm looking forward to visiting it once it's um, completed.
fully accessible. Now you mentioned um, mobile mobility, meaning uh, internet access. Are we looking at having wireless, a wireless community, perhaps like a computer? Yeah, there'll, there'll be there'll be a wireless system. There'll be a wireless system that 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 will be uh, able to be utilized by by visitors, as well as a computer lab in itself, fully fully set up computer lab. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll have multi, we'll have uh, multiple sitting areas where, where one could like, use a laptop there. Like I said, we'll also have a, a there's a coffee station that where Community Action has uh, committed to like you know um, um, you know purchasing coffee like the the K, you know the uh, K -Rick cups or whatever. And we'll have the, that system there um, where you know like you know there'll be some it's going to be some mm -hmm. nice stuff where people are going to want to you know come and visit and, and, and stay there. You know what I mean? Thank you so much. I appreciate Absolutely. It. I, but I definitely look into that sidewalk thing. I didn't even think about that. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. No uh, Ken Han is up next. Ken, I recognize Ken. Okay. Um, I was interested, in, are we going to have any stage performance type uh, part of the facility? Hey, uh, good evening, Mr. Ken. Um, yeah, absolutely. There, um, and within our great room, it, it's, um, I don't know how many of you have ever been out to uh, uh, the, uh, the Renaissance Center out there on yes. the econ trail it, it, it rivals that um it, it's about as, as large as that i, I can't oh, wow. i can't remember how many people it holds but it's i mean you could have a, a humongous wedding um event there uh it, the, the, it, there is a stage that we are uh putting there not a temporary stage but there's a permanent stage that that's there um, we'll have uh the audio visual equipment we have audio visual room that facilitates uh the entire that entire room well, um, there should be drop down uh, screens that come. We can have projections there as well. If we need to do presentations, it's, it's set up, you know, if uh, if somebody wants to come in and speak or if uh, Mayor Demings wants to come there and have a, you know, a grand, uh, you know, speech, or it, it, it'll, it's, it'll be set up for anything you want to do, plays, um, anything, church, anything. Um, any facilities for Orange County to do a broadcast on Orange TV. Well, I'm not necessarily sure about that, Mr. Jim. Um, that would probably have to go through our Orange County uh, Orange TV department. But um, I would imagine that yeah, our facility will be able to host someone doing a remote broadcast. There, maybe nothing permanent, but definitely a remote broadcast. Thanks, Ken. Are there any more questions to, to Mr. Geisen? Anybody? Um, yes. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Geisen. It's Sandra Fatmi Hall. Good. Thank you. I wanted to know, um, as the same hill that um, Dr. Nichols mentioned, it's typically dark um, in that particular area. And I, I know I have called in in reference to lighting in that area. So I don't know if something um, is being done about that or if you're aware that it's dark there, that light doesn't work. Well, we, we temporarily got those lights going again once we mm -hmm. uh, procured the building. Um, since that point, we have added new site lighting around the um, the top part of, of that hill where the actual building itself sits, and they kind of go along almost along the perimeter. Um, those lights are not on right now because we're waiting on OUC, of course, uh, for them to get the transformer set, which should be maybe another week and a half. But those LED site lightings are going to be uh, normally a lot brighter and they will they will light that uh, that area up as well as uh, the new facade that we're putting on there it, it lights that building up as well um so we're, it's it'll sit that it, it um the, the new lighting i said like i said it sits in the parking lot and goes all the way down to the corner and comes around um so what we probably need to do is probably take a look with look at maybe our um see, i don't know who owns that piece of property i don't know if it's us around that corner or not but we have to look at someone maybe trimming those trees back to kind of get it a little bit clearer, you know what I mean? Because there's really no need for it to be that thick. And also we, we want people to see the uh, facility. Right. So I, I'll take a look at that. Like, I don't think that we own that part of the facility, but I, okay. can, um, I can figure something out. I'll figure something out. Don't okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And I recognize Dr. Nichols' hands again. Hi, right, one last question. And- Oh, uh, you saw too much trouble, Dr. Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I love it. Um, with that 17,000 square feet in the, the build out itself, are you looking at, is there consideration related to classroom build outs for, for, for probably I'm thinking fitness 
for educational training, financial training, et cetera. So somewhere where speakers can come in and provide some um, educational services. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna attempt if I can show my screen if they allow me to do it. Yeah. And I'll see if I can show you uh, the. Um... Oh, share your screen. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let, let me find you. Let me. Give me one second, people. Let me do this. Go back to full screen. Go back to full screen. No, I, I want to go back to gallery view. Thank you. Then I'm gonna go here and share my screen with you allow to um okay i'll make you co-host i just made you co-host I, so, I, feel so, I feel so official right now okay yes <laughs> now right, i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen okay here. okay now you can share your screen there we go thank you okay. perfect let me see how do i make this smaller anyway uh okay so this is the uh, kind of don't tell anybody i showed you this okay so that, okay. that's the this <laughs> this is the new uh this is the new facade if i could i wish i could blow it up i don't know can everybody see that the yeah. new facade what i was talking about how how that pops out there's different colors in there that that specify like the different ethnicities and that type of stuff that's what i was talking to you guys about let me uh Bear with me for a moment, please. Sure, thank you. She you was know, trying to warm up, I guess. <clears throat> we have people on Facebook. That I'm, I want to thank those that's watching us and following us live on Facebook. Thank you very much. So you get a chance to. Got a lot on your. All right, so so right, so this right here, this this right here is a good is a good. Uh, so you guys get a. a an idea of the uh, the magnitude of the build of uh, what we're doing. So this is this is what you see here is the entire building itself, and you see which is no. Uh, uh, I, click on it, please, because we're not seeing anything but your. Uh, so I need you to click on it and open up what you have. You don't see my open. screen. I see your screen, but I don't see a building. Right here. There go. Okay. Okay. Thank I'm you. sorry. I'm so sorry. All right. All right. So um. So what you see here is is the uh, is the building itself. You guys can kind of get a, the footprint of the overall building itself. Okay. Um, this area right here is the news. Our is the interior build out. So you see, we still have another thirty eight thousand square feet of unused area, um, you know, for expansion. Okay. Uh, in case we want to do other phases and or stage as warehouse space, we have roll up doors down here. So it's it's a grand facility itself, it, and it's definitely uh, will be. Um, Great to utilize, can great to be utilized by the uh, by the area. You um, can so, enlarge it if you want to. If you go to those three dots up to the. Uh, well, I got I got this right here. I just I didn't want to. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't want to make it too tight. I'm not sure about the screen. Um, but uh, like I was saying before, so this is this is the entrance right here. This is our our coffee cafe look. Okay. Uh, we have reception area here. Our computer labs here. Um, someone was just asking about the classroom. So we have a classroom over. We have classroom over here. We have two conference rooms over here. We can hold. We have three. Another conference room here, which will hold. Uh, which can be double classrooms, multi-purpose rooms. They'll all be equipped with uh, audio-visual uh, screens, that type of thing. Um, we have a sitting area here where one can utilize the the Wi-Fi or just sit and enjoy the area or a flex space if we want to have a wedding there. You can, you can stage. Uh, hors d'oeuvres there or waiting area before someone comes into our great room, which is right here. Um, and then you see how large, this is a very, very large building with a warming kitchen uh, back here in the in the rear, which has um, access from the outside to the warming kitchen loading area. Um, right okay. here at the bottom of the screen is our is our stage, which says platform. We have a dressing room there um, and also our audio visual room, which Mr. King was talking about, which, which, will, which will house all of our audio visual equipment um, uh, those types of things. And we've got multiple storage units, I mean, storage areas here to facilitate the, the amount of tables that we're going to order for this building. Um, so, um, and then we also have our service area right here. So when one comes in, they could, you know, they get greeted by receptionists and then they can go to our service uh, partners that uh, we'll share this building with as well. 
Does anybody have any questions about that? Uh, mm -hmm. who, uh, how are you going to uh, share the building? Did you say? Well, I said with our uh, with our, our partners, our internal partners that uh, do, through community action, like uh, Lahi, or I'm not exactly sure who they're going to have in, but those that will be services that that uh, service our community. So the plans for the unbuilt out space is more for like warehouse or for. There, there, there are no plans for the unbuilt space. Yeah, there's, those are just possibilities of things that you can do there. There's been a lot of discussion, uh, you know, with senior staff about things that they may think about doing, but nothing's uh, been concrete. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When you say that's all. I need to. Guys, can you uh, take your share screen down for a second? I. Is Scott Randolph, one second, guys, and stay there. Is Scott Randolph? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm here, Patricia. That's my camera oh, says Hillary Randolph. Hillary. So. Oh, Scott. <laughs> thank Sorry. you. My, my okay. daughter's computer, so. Okay, I keep going. I, I'm here. You're, you're okay. fine. <laughs> thank you, Scott. Thank you. Okay, Phoenix Geisen, thank you. Uh, that's all I. That's all I have for you guys. I just. Uh, I just wanted to just let you know when they, when when um they were asking about the uh, classroom and the conference room area. I just wanted to just kind of let you know how the building was oriented, and um, also there there's um, we'll make it to where we also have um, some exterior space. We can have outside events as well too. We also have it. It'll be able to facilitate like a farmers market on the outside. There's some water provided out there. We've got temporary generator hookups. Um, for the facility, um, so like I said, it, it will rival everything else, if not be the best uh, community center we have. Okay. So I don't have my my hand. I can't find my hand, Patricia. But okay. To you, you <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Van. You said something about Lahi. Now Lahi is the way people help with their light bills and so forth. Is that the kind of service that'll be inside of that building? I have no idea, uh, Ms. Richardson. I, I don't know. I'm just saying I know in other uh, community centers like at John Bridges and at uh, East Orange Community Center, a lot of these a lot of these uh, community partners are are in those facilities. So I have no idea uh, what uh, Ms. Williams was the, uh, the manager yeah. of community. I don't have no idea what, what their plan is. Oh, okay. But there, 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 there's uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's six, there's six, seven internal offices that would be fully equipped to, you know, for, with a desk, a file cabinet, um, computer hookups with the uh, with our network. That well, whomever um, decides to come into that facility will be able to to function to not operate. Yeah. Okay. Thank it'd you. Probably be like it'd be like the council uh, office at the community center. Yeah. And the office is down that road. Yeah. It seems that hallway. They taken over the, the, the things that was at the Pine Hill Council. Now is going to be up at this center. That's what I'm thinking. Or so are they planning on closing the Pine Hill Council building? Uh, oh, for uh, the Pine Hill Community Center or current one? Right. Yes. No, I'm. No, I'm. No, we're 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 looking right now. I'm, I am I'm getting ready to do some HVAC upgrades at that facility. I'm not sure what the future plans are, but I I have not heard not one time about them closing that at all. I don't think that's what the plan is. I'm pretty sure that's not what the plan is. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank no you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, right, see, I, have, you a, have, a, yeah. I have a quick request. Okay. Uh, could, is there any way we could get a? Uh, you could send us a, uh, the picture, the diagram that you have, the two f photos that are on your. Um, your design yeah i'll get with miss i'll get with miss patricia i'll get with miss patricia and um we'll get i'll get that to her and then she can uh get that to you guys is that okay Ms. Oh, that'd be awesome perfect okay thank all right you. i'll get with rose i'll get with rose nancy and i have her get with you thank you guys that'd be great oh, no problem thank you thank you no problem you. everybody good no more questions Just speak now speak now you might not know what's going on oh, we got him, yeah. oh yeah how, how uh i just have a i agree with dr uh nichols that uh, there is a bus stop and Hiawassee, and then there's a hill. Mm -hmm. And especially if there are seniors and older people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe it's something that we can, I don't know how, I know in like uh, at, uh, at East Orange Community Center, I just built a small bus stop for a Lynx, um, for a Lynx stop. 
uh, and maybe just we can have some discussions about that with them coming up, actually coming up that hill, um, you know, and dropping off, you know, clients or, or whomever. You know, what I mean, that, that probably makes more sense. You know, to right. have someone have to struggle up that hill, even even on how I watch the main thoroughfare. I'm I'm not really sure. I I, I, I can bring that up as well too, and I'll see. That'd what, be awesome for a bus cutouts where they can just kind of, as people uh, as is using it as a uh, venue for. A larger gatherings, even a cutout mm -hmm. space where people can drop off. I, I can bring that up. We, we, I've seen, I've, I've seen people do all kind of things. I've done all kind of bus stops and made changes before. So I, I'll get with uh, the powers that be. This is way above my pay grade, of course. But um, I love. Uh, <laughs> <Of course. laughs> so, so that was Miss Patricia's uh, pay grade. Uh, but I love. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'll see. I have no, I have no problem with asking the questions. I have no problem with asking the questions. Uh, awesome. Thank you. That's Thank the important you. thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And okay. Rick, Rick, Hi, Rick, everybody. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, all right. yeah good to see you. I nice see you. Bye. We got our guest speaker on the line. We're going to go ahead on and do um, uh, a committee report. Scott, give us about five more minutes, please. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I'll very turn much. my camera on then when, whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're going to move into our committee reports and the anti litter beautification report. Dr. Nichols. Thank you, Patricia, and thank you everyone that's um, listening and part of the tonight's meeting. I just want to share some brief highlights related to our 2021 community, community Earth Day cleanup collision. And it was fantastic. We had a great morning actually meeting and greeting and prayer time and sharing. And then we all went to work in different locations. Many met many new um, businesses, as well as some of our current partners or Orange County Sheriff Department. Um, Mr. Jason Reynolds and his crew were out as well, cleaning up with the with the group. So we had a wonderful opportunity of not just cleaning up the area in one particular location of Pine Hills, but we took um, the 60 plus individuals that showed up to volunteer that morning and we divided and conquered. So some went along Silver Star Road, some went along Powers, Balboa, Hiawassee, uh, the entire corridor pretty much of Silver Star between Powers and um, Hiawassee and Pine Hills Road. So it was a phenomenal morning, um, Earth Day gatherings and, and working together to clean up and beautify and revitalize our area. And next year, get ready. Uh, we're going to need more helping hands. It's going to be bigger and better. We had some lessons learned, and uh, we yes. hope to certainly do it again and do it at, at a, in a larger scope. So anything else you wanted to sh share, Patricia, or anyone on the beautification committee that was present? No, mm -mm, I'm good. Okay. I think um, a good job was done um, overall, and it was quite memorable and um, absolutely engaged a lot of our community members. And you know me, I'm going to come on here and say, let's not forget our young people because they showed out in numbers as well. So everyone that came out um, truly made a difference. And it's important that everyone understand that they um, keep their, they're, they're responsible for keeping their community clean yes. and help pick it up. Yeah, absolutely. If we all do our part, we will be in a clean and safe community. So thank you all. Amazing, Dr. Uh, Nichols um, and uh, Patricia, Pastor Joy, everyone. It was a team effort by all and well done. Thank you. Uh, definitely a team effort and uh, everyone is certainly appreciated. We're going to move into the code enforcement side. I only had two major points that I wanted to cover and yield the rest of the time to our guest speakers. But um, Orange County Code Enforcement 311, non-emergency help. Uh, as I mentioned, Mr. Jason Reynolds and his entire crew or some of his crew members were there. And uh, we, we worked at the area and, and they certainly picked up and helped. We wanna make sure that um, those listening continue to spread the word about anti-litter and beautification in our community. And you're gonna see more as we move forth in our area of this uh, community beautification and what we're going to try to do is reach out more and gain more volunteers and school students and college students in the, in the work because there's much work that still needs to be done. 
but please utilize, utilize the 311 um, Orange County for the 311 call if you see anything or text them or even go online to web chat uh, and just utilize those particular services. But again, thank you to all that joined us. It was phenomenal. So many partners, so many community members, so many students um, and volunteers, and we really appreciated it. Very good, very good. There's two things that came offline that they came on, on Facebook. A couple of people that's watching Facebook says uh, they had a great time. Marilyn uh, says she had a great, great time. Marilyn, rather than messing up your last name, I'm not gonna pronounce your last name, but she's a partner with the council, but she had a great time. Also, a uh, Peggy. Her name, is, her name is Marlene. Okay, Marlene, thank you. See there, Marlene. Thank you, Miss Landra. Bonzil Juiced. Okay, she had a great time. And uh, Peggy from uh, Representative uh, Congressman Bad Demis' office says, when is the next cleanup? And we clean up every fourth Saturday of the month. So our next cleanup will be May the 22nd. It's every fourth Saturday of the month. So May the 22nd. And before we move on to our guest speaker, I want to go back to the Cultural Center, because uh, uh, Marilyn, I call her Marilyn again, Maylene also made another comment that I missed. And Bettina, if you could in, uh, record this comment in your minutes, please. She says, she talked about security. Mm -hmm. What type of security is gonna be at that facility? So if you please make note of that, Bettina, please. I did not see her comment <coughs> earlier. I think it's very worth mentioning in that that facility what type of security would be around that facility. Thank you for making those comments and that's watching Facebook Live. Thank you very much, people. And thank you all here also. So we got one more um, committee report, then we'll be going to go into our, our guest speaker. You got three minutes. Ms. Sandra, do you want to say anything about the, the, the MLK? Um, yes, thank you um, very much on behalf of the MLK, MLK initiative. Um, we did a combating hate um, zone of phobia against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders virtual event um, that took place on April 28th. And I would just um, encourage everyone to just stay active in your community, stay um, engaged with what's going on. The MLK initiative under our mayor, Jerry Demons, make sure that they participate and be inclusive of everyone. Right. Um, yes. As we go ahead and yeah, inclusive of everyone. And I'd like to give them a huge shout out for supporting our food drive. Um, the last food drive that we had, um, they came out in numbers and stayed from beginning to end and made sure that um, they were um, a part of giving back in the food drive to this community. And for that, I say thank you. And that's all we have for now. Stay tuned next month for upcoming events and what we're participating in next. Thank you. I'm gonna bring up our, uh, our guest speaker that we invited to come tonight. And Mr. Scott Randolph, I'm just gonna say a little bit about him. Uh, you all know him as our Orange County tax collector. But uh, Mr. Scott Randolph was elected as Orange County tax collector back in November, 2012. He was reelected in 2016. He was reelected again in 2020. But prior to becoming the Orange County tax collector, Mr. Randolph served at the Florida Legislature, and he served on the Finance and Tax Committee. Mr. Randolph is an attorney, so he is very, he bring very good experience in state and local tax policies for the Owens County Tax Collector's Office. He has served as tax collector for uh, seven years now. If you notice recently, and I'm sure you have, he's made so many up-to-date modern improvement on the Orange County Tax Collector Office, where we can uh, take a, care of a lot of our business online. Uh, right now, his top priority is to serve Orange County taxpayers and customers. He continues to focus on providing faster and more efficient customer service by embracing new technologies to improve customer interaction with all office. And Scott, it is working. Right now, Florida Department of Revenue has ranked Orange County Tax Collector's Office as the third most efficient tax collector office in the state of Florida. So let's welcome someone that I have come to know real well, 
and our Orange County tax collector, Mr. Scott Randolph. Thank you, Scott, for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Patricia. Thanks uh, everyone for letting me join you for a few minutes. Great to see everyone. Um, uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just have a few updates for you guys on what's going on. Um, of course, right now is actually still sort of the wrapping up property tax season. So uh, at the end of the month, um, the delinquent property taxes will go to our annual tax certificate sale. Amazingly, we're actually uh, have about 3,000 fewer parcels this year than we did last year. If you know, if you're wondering in your mind how uh, local government budgets are going to look next year, I think they're going to be perfectly healthy next year at least. Um, and by three, 3,000 is probably about a, a good 10% drop. Uh, so we're actually 10% fewer delinquent property uh, parcels this year. Oh, very uh, good. For the, for the, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing for the 2020 uh, property taxes as we were in 2019. So I think next year looks looks pretty good for the school districts and local governments. Um, I think it'll be the year after that, that we'll definitely have to uh, watch out for. I think the property appraiser, our, our new property appraiser, uh, Amy Mercado, has her hands full, um, I'm sure this year, as there'll be a lot of uh, uh, you know, big businesses, especially in the hospitality industry that uh, are looking for revisions in their appraised value. So, um, cause so much of that appraisal is based upon uh, income uh, of those properties. And so obviously uh, there's a, their, their argument's gonna be that, you know, obviously their, their income was down significantly in 2019. And the reason that that becomes difficult is because uh, much like, you know, we, we have the 3% cap on uh, homesteaded properties, there's a there's a 10% cap on non-homesteaded properties. So if one year sees a very significant drop in that appraised value, it is very difficult to um, to have a V-shape uh, recovery on that. So uh, instead, that cap would come into place, and it would take several years uh, really to get back up. Even even if that property was obviously doing fine, like it probably will be. Um, now and, and going forward, it, even with that, it, it, there could be significant restrictions on, on the appraised value of some very large pieces of property here in Orange County. So I know our new property appraiser, uh, Amy Mercado, again, she has her hands full there. That will be very interesting to watch, but, but, uh, but know that everything's pretty good on, on, on the property tax side um, as far as that. As I always like to remind people as we, as we go into the season, um, nonetheless, you know, check in on your your elderly neighbors uh, or, or people in, uh, you know, the, the, in your church um, who maybe lost a spouse in the last year or anything like that. We always find, you know, that, that a lot of times there was a spouse that took care of the bills or there was a child that took care of the bills or something like that. And, and um, you know, our, our, um, uh, our people, our employees will, will be going out as well to make, to, you know, to try to make sure that at least homestead a piece of the property that they know, what's going on. And we, and we all always do that every year as well, but always check in, you know, and, 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 and I like to remind people too, if you're part of a nonprofit and you, you got a tax bill and you're like, Oh, we're exempt from, from property taxes. Uh, make sure you look at the non ad valorem on that. Uh, because if you, <laughs> if you own those prop, if you own that property, like a church uh, or even like a church parking lot, sometimes they're not exempt. Um, uh, make sure you look at that. I'm not saying that we don't make mistakes, but uh, when you get a, a uh, a property tax bill, make sure you open that up. And if you have questions, give us a call. Uh, Cause uh, again, we work very hard to make sure that nonprofits don't lose their property and they know what's going on. But uh, again, check in on that. Um, <clears throat> this fall was going to be once again, the deadline for uh, getting what's called a real ID on your driver's license, the little star on your driver's license. We're still at about 83, 84% compliance there. Um, that had been going into effect uh, the 1st of October. And once again, um, the de uh, Department of Homeland Security has issued an extension of that, which I actually didn't think they had the authority to do. They'd finally gotten to the point where they were gonna have to go back to Congress. So Congress must have stuck in w into one of those uh, recovery bills somewhere, a provision to give them the discretion to do that again. Um, here we are literally 20 years after 9-11 when they first and they first passed the Real ID Act back in wow. 2006 to, to try to increase, you know, the document requirements uh, to, to get an ID. And here we are 
even 15 years after that bill passed Congress. And there are still a lot of states out there that are not real ID compliant at all. Uh, California just started last year as, as probably being the biggest one, but you had Iowa, Iowa and, and other states like that. And, and even though we're real ID compliant, you know, probably again, about 84, 85%, I think it would become a real concern for the hospitality industry again, because of course, uh, without that real ID compliant um, uh, driver's license, you either had to have a, have a passport to get on a plane or that real ID compliant driver's license. So I think a lot of people in the hospitality industry were, were getting worried about that coming up. But nonetheless, that was put off yet again. Um, you might have heard uh, yesterday that the governor uh, preempted local government mask ordinances. Uh, while I think other other parts of local government uh, have the luxury to look that, you know, to, to digest that for a little while. Um, okay. Uh, and to check that over for a, a little while, um, you know, we get uh, thousands of people in our office every day, so we didn't have that luxury. We've, uh, uh, if you go into one of our offices now, it's strongly recommended to have a mask, but you know, our reading of the governor's mask mandate uh, no longer allows us to require a mask to come into our offices. I will say most people, I would say a good 95% of people in our office today were still wearing masks. And we still require our employees to wear masks, but okay. know that going forward, that you know, as time goes forward, I, I I think that will change, and there's there's not much we can do about it, unless something else comes down that pipeline. So um, so if you can do something online, um, take care of it online. Um, otherwise, know that uh, you know when you come into the office, you might you might come across people that are not wearing masks, and, and we can't enforce that anymore. Um, given that. As you know, I mean, obviously for the last year we've operated as an appointment only office. Uh, quite frankly, we are, we anticipate that we'll go forward as an appointment only office. So it's been um, quite good for us uh, operationally. I think operational efficiency on that. I think we finally got past the, the tax season and the economic stimulus season uh, that really uh, exploded <laughs> our title queues. So I know if you've tried to make a a title appointment in the last couple of months, you, you may have had a, a week or even 10 days out to get an appointment for titles. Know that that's always the case. We, we always are inundated during, uh, during federal tax season. As people get their tax returns, uh, they love to go out and buy cars. So <laughs> spring is always a busy time for us uh, for a title season, but I think we're seeing the corner, um, rounding the corner on that. Uh, I know this week we had at least three offices that had title appointments within two days. So um, we, well, what's amazing though, is that you know, we based the number of appointment slots we had for, for each type of service based upon what we were doing right, right prior to the, the pandemic. But we now have 40% more title appointments than before the pandemic, which just goes to show you how much, two, two factors, are how much people are buying cars and how much people are moving into Florida because the other half of that is obviously people titling their car when they move to Florida. At one point in January, about 35% of, of our title queue were, was, were people moving to Florida. That's how much Orange County was growing over the last six months. So if you, again, I always like to say our office is one that feels uh, population growth quite early. Uh, and I can tell you that certainly in the last year, we have seen a tremendous amount uh, of population growth here in Orange County, despite what the census may say. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the census was right before or wrapping up sort of, I think, uh, during the pandemic. So uh, they, they might not say that in the census, but I can tell you definitely in the last nine months, we have seen a big population growth here. Um, probably just the last thing, and then I'll open it up for any questions anybody may have. Um, I think just like a lot of businesses, uh, we are hiring. So if you know anybody, uh, who is, is great at customer service, uh, make sure they go on our website and uh, fill out an application. Uh, our starting salary is, is $15 for our front, front counter, and that, which goes up to above $16 after the training period of about six weeks. Um, and obviously that comes with uh, uh, the county health healthcare plan and, and retirement benefits as well. So if you know anybody looking, certainly, um, certainly give us a ring and um, drop us a uh, an application that'll be on the website. So with that, I'll uh, open it up to anybody that has any questions. That's good to know. 
I'll ask the first question. Um, is there anything new coming up? I, I know you've been uh, very much on the cutting edge, Scott, on the front line and making changes like with the appointments and all that kind of good stuff. So is there anything new coming up? Um, and not not immediately, but we do have some big projects uh, in the works. I, I don't think you'll you'll see them and uh, you may not see them uh, yeah. for for several months, but behind the scenes uh, we're working on a new I think a new expanded queuing system. <laughs> we're working on a, 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 a more robust queuing system that obviously uh, keeps up with technology on, on a lot of things like automatic um, uh, checking in when you when you get close to the office, you know, the geo fencing, those type of things. Um, those are sort of long term projects, long term projects. I think also we're, we're pressuring the state um, to, to be able to accept um electronic signatures basically as you know in a lot of in a lot of transactions now you can yeah. take an electronic signature um and and the reason for that the reason we want that is to be able to do it for titles um certainly the one thing i think the one thing that we always see is that obviously there's you have to do that title transaction in person right now and there's some good reason for that you know obviously there's you know uh, uh wanting to, to tamp down on fraud and those things but we're hoping that the state will give us the ability to accept electronic signature soon so that you'll be able to do a title transaction um, online um, or at least back and forth uh, more so that there's a whole lot less uh, need for in-person transactions on that. Um, we've updated uh, the tag renewal, which is very cool. I know very probably it looks minor on your renewal if you get it, but it's actually been quite helpful. It's in interesting technology wise that the less friction you put in front of someone as far as transaction, um, how much more successful it is. So you'll notice on the, on the tag renewals, there's like a little QR code, which I always hated before because you always had to, you know, like download an app or something like that. But the, the new Q, QR codes that take you straight to a website, but the new QR code on our, on our renewals will actually take you straight to your record uh, for your tag renewal. So you, there, it really takes out a lot, a lot of like user, um, mistakes or anything like that when looking up a, a record on your renewal it's actually helped quite a bit we found almost immediately there was about if for anyone looking to do qr codes um probably about 33 percent of our customers uh did that qr code um for their renewal uh which is an amazing level of adopting um sort of a new little technology there on the on the on the code after that we'll be we'll, we're looking to be able to not to actually to just automate that even even further. So I think in the next year or two, uh, our goal is to really automate um, the tag renewals even more and um, things like that. So we've got some projects, I'm not sure it, you know, it's, it's forward facing, but I promise you we're, we're working, continuing to work in IT that makes it uh, much better. Thank and you. Continue to do so hopefully. Does anyone else have any questions? Do I see any hands raised? Anybody? I have a question. Do we know the date uh, of the new change for the real ID? Because I know people are going to be asking me in meetings. <laughs> well, it's it's delayed another 16 months. So I think it's now into uh, the, uh, all the way into the early. Yeah, yeah. When when they delay something, they don't, <laughs> it's not by a few months. So they put it. <laughs> so it's not into early 2023 now. So but I think they get a lot of pressure again. I think they get a lot of pressure from the, from big hospitality. Again, some of these states are just so far behind. Um, they fought it for so long for some reason, you know, that there was a lot of fight about, oh, whether this was some national ID or something like that. But, um, but it's not, I, I, you know, I, I, and Patricia, as we talk about that and, and the real ID, one thing that uh, Florida is continuing to work on now, which we're a little bit behind on in this state is, um, electronic driver's licenses. So having your driver's license on your iPhone or, you know, or, or on your, um, your phone wow. um, as an official ID, you know, a lot of people will always want that, I think, to have that regular driver's license as the backup, but Florida will be rolling out a more robust um, program in the next year for electronic driver's licenses. Wow. Now, that, <laughs> what's that, what, what's good about that is, and I, I think that I think the selling point for the state, honestly, is that um, their goal is to um, 
allow vent, allow um, like restaurants or um, alcohol sales or you know can, uh, tobacco sales or something like that. Anything really where you where you present an ID is that they would then then what would happen is that that app would actually ping the ping the state database immediately to confirm um, the the validity of that driver's license. Which One, will someone. Someone from Facebook said they like that idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I, I think I think it'll be a great technology. You know, it's amazing. Um, I don't know how quickly it will catch on, but I, I think maybe I, I'm surprised. Still, you know, it's like uh, airports. Airports have had kiosks for 20 oh, years now, yeah. and, and uh, you know, it's still tough even to get people to to use kiosks in our office without without someone standing there. So, but. It, but you know, you just never know. Uh, again, I think it'll be good technology for people that need to verify IDs, um, and I think it'll be a. a I think for like, uh, obviously for restaurants, and again, alcohol, any place where you, you know, if you want to check an ID, to be able to have that technology to ping that database um, and check the validity of that database, which one, once again, obviously just makes our job that much more important. People, people don't think of it, but. Even if you're in a business where you're checking somebody's ID, how long do you actually look at it? Five seconds, yeah. 10 seconds. What you expect is that the documents and the validity of that ID have been confirmed by us. Um, and, and obviously that's one thing that we, we always take very seriously. We're, we're, always, we're continuing and we always are continuing to beef up our fraud department, our fraud unit um, uh, and, and things like that to, to make sure that that we're not issuing fraudulent um, IDs and because it, it's our job, you know, and a lot of people rely on us to make sure that that, that ID is, is issued correctly because again, they look at it for five seconds, but, but still nonetheless, they rely on us. I'm gonna go to Dr. Nichols, her, her hand is up. I mute myself. Um, Scott, thank you for sharing that information. I just wanted to share that I have the opportunity today because we misplaced our uh, tag registration for one of our cars. And I went to the website and went to the online services that are there. Um, the process was fairly simple. However, my question is, is after you make the payment, uh, it, it's a seven to 10 day wait for your replacement. And that information is already there. Is there a way to possibly look at a with the DocuSign, of course, or something similar to actually receive that information quicker. So an automatic, such as you select the option, you pay for it, you sign whatever, and then yeah. you a copy of, of your registration since it's just the replacement. Did you, so did you fill out that, did you have to fill out the form? You filled out the form on the replacement or? Yes, with the information, yeah. put down your name, yeah. your social security number. Your yeah. And you're exactly right. That's a, that's another area that we would like electronic signatures on. That's exactly right. Uh, I, I, I didn't mention that, but but that's exactly right. Another place where we'd like electronic signatures because that's a state form, and it's and it's sort of crazy. They make you fill out this form to get a replacement, and we got to send it, then you got to send it back, and 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 yeah, and you know with today's technology, you can take a picture, and it's not. But still, I mean, electronic signatures uh, would make that. A, a, a whole lot easier. It, it's an annoying process. The state still has on that. By the way, it says seven to 10 days, but I, I, I promise you probably if you, as soon as you filled that out, I, I'm sure it got processed today. So we, the real reason we put seven to 10, to 10 days now is that it's the post office. Post office, um, yes. And I've seen everything from, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we, obviously we send so much mail and we, we send so much mail out in notices and we send so much mail out in renewals. Boy, we also feel, you know, how's, how's the post office doing today? <laughs> Some weeks they're doing great. You know, I can see a, what, you know, a, a renewal notice go out and it hit, and it hit mailboxes two or two days later and three days later. But I've seen on the back end of that, I've, I've seen it to where, you know, we re-record when it gets, when like a tag renewal gets processed and it gets mailed out. And I've seen it take two weeks from the time it leaves our office to, to for it to get delivered even in orange county which is which is sad so we put seven to ten days at, but but 95 percent that that really is about two to three days it really depends on the on the post office on that um, one of the other things we're working on technology wise is just letting people know where that where everything is in the process when you do those tag renewals 
being able to log in. So that's another uh, um, uh, thing we're trying to do for customers. Because we get a lot of phone calls, a lot. If you think about it, I mean, we do, you know, probably about 60,000 uh, to 70,000 tag renewal notices go out every single month. And, and about 60% of those are now done online and in the mail. So we do, you know, we'll, we'll send about 30, 30 to 35,000, maybe even 40,000 tag renew, renewals in the mail every month. And so even if, even if the post office, you know, accurately and, and timely delivers 99% of those, that's still 400 people <laughs> that, that have a question about where their tags are. So we get quite a few phone calls about, Hey, where's my tag renewal? Uh, and, and so, we know where it's at in the process because we have all that, but it's not a, it's not interactive with the customer. And so we're, we're working on trying to make that interactive with the customer so that they don't have to give us a call or wait for an email response on that. So that is something we're working on. And again, Thanks. it's amazing. It's, again, it could be 99% accurate, but that's still 400 people a month, at least 400 people a month. Yeah. Thank you. Miss Van has a question. Yeah, Scott, you uh, updated a lot of things, but I didn't hear how you're going to update uh, materials when it comes to paying your property tax because you still if you try to use a card online you have to pay this a fee so is it something in the process that gonna have to eliminate that fee so we can maybe pay you directly so that we don't have to pay a fee if we use our credit card online to pay yeah there there probably there, there probably will, will not be an elimination of a credit card fee you can pay online we we have um uh, e-checks. And so if it's coming directly out of your bank account, there's not a fee um, for that anymore um, because we wanted to encourage people to do that. Okay. Credit card wise though, it's just such large transactions and the credit card companies charge us. Um, mm -hmm. And so if if we started eating that fee, that would be, honestly, that'd be hundreds, hundreds of thousands, if not a couple of million dollars a year that the taxing authorities would would suddenly not get and they would be very unhappy with us uh if suddenly but the e-check is good because you didn't have e-checks before yeah they're they're on there you know I'll, I'll go back and look i want to make sure that they're they're easy to find no, um, I see uh, so yeah but, if, you got, if you got some way besides just putting it in the mail to be able to get it to you without a fee that's what yeah I'm so yeah that each check should be up there i'll i'll check the website make sure it's nice and that it's that is visible visible for people and it's not it's not in a bad spot i'll, I'll go back and check yeah, on that but that, that but that is an option thank you. you thank you one oh, thanks for one other thing yes one other thing you you mentioned about the driver's license of being uh electronic and as i thought about that scott that may not be a bad idea because these driver licenses are so fragile they bend and break real easily as compared to years ago you know, they fold at the middle so easy to break. Uh, have you noticed yeah. that? Oh, well, yeah. about uh, that? You know, it's sort of a, a, it's amazing how many people, you know, lose their driver's license. So I do think it'll be, and again, I think that the, the state pilot project is still that it's, that it's mostly, I want to say it's just a supplemental driver's license, at least for the initial issuance. So you'll still have to come in and get um, a regular driver's license for an initial issuance. But then much like you can do a, you know, you can do that renewal online okay. um, for for one time for your driver's license. And so this would allow you to do, to do that or update it. The, the thing is, is quite frankly, I mean, if, if <laughs> so the state and it's not us, they have not, they have not raised our little service fee to issue a driver's license since 1984. Mm -hmm. um, so the state has forced, you know, our, our DHS and V services are really subsidized through mm -hmm. your local property taxes because we lose money on DHS and V services because the state hasn't raised what we get mm -hmm. out of that transaction since 1984. And so, um, but the state, uh, the state makes a ton of money <laughs> every time you lose that driver's license. People are, and people are always complaining to us, you know, oh, I've lost it. Why, why do you have to charge? And, you know, it's all the state that, that's doing that. And, and they rely quite a bit uh, on that, on that fee. And so, and especially um, people always say, okay. oh, I don't get it. Why don't I get a, a, a refund if I turn in my license plate halfway through the renewal year, you know, Hey, I bought a new car or, 
or stop driving this car. And I still have like eight months left on that tag, re you know, that tag registration. And the state just will not, you know, the state just doesn't refund any of that money um, as well. And, and of course, then they really hit people who are uh, titling that car for the first time is, is a big yes. $20 fee. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, that was going to be uh, my point. Which I think surprises some people, especially if they're moving into state with two or three vehicles to register. They uh, they tend not to be very happy. But again, that's the the state. The okay, state Anthony. Mr. Budget on that. Mr. Anthony, you have a question. Oh no, ma'am. Uh, he just answered it. Uh, that was going to be my question with the uh, the credit for the title when you turn your tag in. I think yeah. that they, uh, I turned one in before uh, with a uh, separate vehicle that uh, me and my fiance had purchased and um i think i got you know with the new tag you might pay 400 to 450 for it and i think i turned the tag back in and i got maybe an 80 dollar credit for it so it was kind of you know a big difference so <laughs> that was going to be my next question yeah they, they will sometimes refund out of state uh that's a tiffany has a question tiffany i'm mute to there we go tiffany Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And then welcome evening. and congratulations. I'm Judy New, chairman and president of the NACP. Yes, ma'am. Thank oh. you. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I certainly hope we do a lot more work with the uh, Pine Hills uh, Community Council and Pine Hills in general. Uh, but good afternoon, Mr. Randolph. Quick question for you. And it's kind of apart from the DMV and its services itself, but I'm just thinking about... Um, legislation that's coming down from Tallahassee. Do you happen to know if DMVs can be used as polling places? I'm just thinking of like the DMV being someplace that already has AC and chairs and water and uh, um, vending machines. And <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an excellent question. It's something I've always talked about with, with uh, the supervisor of elections, Bill Cowles. Um, on early voting sites. I, I think the legislature sort of expanded where you could put them, but I've definitely offered those up um, okay. to, to the supervisor elections because um, like you said, we have sort of a built-in system. I mean, we see 5,000 people a day, so um, or, or we're used to moving people through that system. And like you said, even just, I, I, and, and definitely I think when the legislature opened it up to where more site, more different type of sites could be early voting that it's better, but it's still not as good as it could be just because he's still limited on where he can put his early voting sites. But our sites are county facilities. And so um, he could put early voting sites. He could put polling places there too, but uh, our facilities are big enough, I think, um, uh, for early voting sites. I, I would love to see some of our, our sites be early voting sites. Like you said, they're seating. More importantly, you're inside in the air conditioning. Is, and, and that's especially important in August during the primaries. Um, speaking of voting laws, I mean, for anybody who who doesn't know, I mean, the legislature did just pass a bill, uh, that, that voting bill, amongst other bad things in it. But if you have a, a mail ballot, if you signed up for a mail ballot, it is no longer valid. Um, and you will need to sign up for a new one. Um, now, we usually put vote by mail requests in all our tag renewals. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and, and a voter registration form. Because mm -hmm. motor voter, so motor voter really only covers obviously when you're doing a driver's license transaction. But driver's license transactions are, you know, 35 to 40 percent of our transactions. So we want to, because we touch so many people every every year, we want to make sure um, that you know we offer those voter registration and those vote by mail opportunities as much as possible. So we put a voter registration and a, and a vote by mail form in all our tag renewals. But right now we're having to review that because they put some additional requirements on vote by mail requests. And so we're trying to figure that out and, and figure out what that form's gonna look like um, and sort of waiting on the supervisors of elections uh, to deal with that. But know that if you if you had a mail ballot last election cycle, you are going to have to request it again. Um, and and from for going forward, you'll have to request that every single election cycle. But Tiffany, I would love to host a, an early voting site. I think we could be efficient at it and um, yeah. Um, I, again, I, I I offer it up to Bill, but maybe if he could, if he hears from somebody else uh, to push the idea along, because because we've got, I mean, we've got thirty thousand feet, thirty thousand square feet at West Oaks, um, you know, twenty two thousand square feet at Lee Vista, 
we and all our locations are designed to be close to to uh, except except for Clericona, all our locations are probably within half a mile to a mile of uh, one of the uh, uh, interstate or turnpikes. So they're all designed to, to, to get to be gotten to very quickly from anywhere in the county and and designed to move people through uh, thank as you, much Scott. as possible. So. Thank you. Thank Scott. you very much for that. I know. That, thank you. I know that you could give us a lot of information, <laughs> but I do want to get to uh, the other uh, representatives here that's representing their uh, political official. Oh gosh, I'm taking Peggy. other people's times. Well, thank you so much for Patricia. No, you, no you're not. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank no, you. I'm a talker. I, I, I'm sorry. So, I know. <laughs> thank you but all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll but talk to you want, soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. But I do want to give Peggy and Athena and anyone else who's representing uh, an elected official an opportunity to give us any updates. Peggy, representing Congressman Val Demis, are there any updates? Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I am so happy to be with you all here today. Um, thank you to our esteemed Orange County tax collector, Mr. Scott Randolph, for those wonderful updates. We are so appreciative. Um, we appreciate the partnership that we have with your office to be able to assist our constituents when they have problems, you know, getting the documentation needed um, to facilitate compliance with the Real ID. So we thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to mention just a couple of things. You know, the month of May holds a lot of observances um, for Military Appreciation, Mental Health Awareness Month. We're recognizing our wonderful teachers today. Um, today is also International Fire Firefighters Day, but um, there are two things I do want to mention and recognize within our community, which is the, the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and make sure we pay tribute to our neighbors, um, our Asian brothers and sisters, and, and, and facilitate stopping the hate. Um, we've got to make sure we pay tribute because they have enriched, enriched our America's history and have been instrumental in its um, success. So, but I would be remiss in not saying, Moulin fait la force. Haiti, uh, May is also Haitian Heritage Month and has a fellow Haitian. I just wanted to, you know, say this is a wonderful opportunity for all of the admirers of Haiti and Haitian culture to be able to celebrate that culture, take a time to not just listen to all the bad things that are happening in the news, but look at the distinct art and the delicious food and the rich traditions um, that come from this country and its people. So um, it's gonna be just a great month and we look forward to celebrating it with all of you. Um, and that's all I wanted to take the time to say. Thank you. And this is also a uh, National Foster Care Month. I just that's read someone right. comment, National Foster Care Month. But thank you so much, Peggy, for always being a, uh, a faithful part of the council every month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Miss Athena, is there anything from uh, Representative Brown office? Hi, everyone. Yeah, I wanted to just let everybody know that we just finished up the legislative session and um, she will be putting out, Representative Brown will be uh, giving everybody an update on what happened during that session shortly, but I encourage people to go to her Facebook page to see um, what's happening with the office. And also uh, there's a way for you to sign up for a newsletter. So it's all on the Facebook page and um, I'm sure you'll hear from her shortly with the legislative update. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a faithful partner to the council as well. And I think we got Commissioner Christine Moore has called in. That is true. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Commissioner Moore. Oh, how what? Yes, thank you for having me, uh, Patricia. I was heading back from another meeting, so thank you for the opportunity to address everyone. I had a, a question actually for um, some of the members of the council because we've been receiving in my office a lot of calls and concerns about the um, land, the yard waste. Um, pick up with solid waste and this is the time of year that all of the division heads come in and talk to the commissioners about our priorities and interest for next year and so um, at this point most of you probably know you can only get six bags or six cans picked up of yard waste and I was curious if folks um, 
would have any interest in trying to expand the contract, which could mean a, an additional cost to the homeowners if you're having a problem, if you think that's an issue in your neighborhood that uh, yard waste gets left week after week after week because they're, they're not picking up enough of it. So that was something that would help me if I had some feedback. Bettina hands, I see your hand, Bettina. Uh, uh, good evening, Commissioner. I appreciate uh, you, you calling in. Uh, we have had trouble having our, our yard waste picked up uh, in the last month. Uh, it's very spotty. Uh, Noel tried to call uh, advanced disposal and was it, did uh, not have any luck giving them a call. I've heard uh, on the next door neighbor there are others. I don't know if this is a problem with staffing. Uh, if they don't, if they, you know, people are, they don't have the drivers or what is the issue. Uh, but currently, uh, this last month, there, it's been rough. And it's a problem countywide. So, but you can and, go ahead and, and ask. It's, it's been rough in Pine Hills is what I know. Okay. She's asking about her district. And uh, I have, I've heard on the next door, I know, and other emails I've gotten, I know that this is an issue. Okay. Yeah, I've been having that same issue and that I called 311 and uh, they will say, okay, and then they put me over to waste department and then they take down my name and address and then they'll pick it up. But I shouldn't have to do that when they're supposed to be doing it every week. So that's my issue. Okay. I shouldn't come. Uh, yes, and I've had problems in other parts of district too with um, I think the main areas I've had calls has been Pine Hills and Wakiva Springs area. So, um, well, I will uh, make an appointment with Mr. Gregory and, and I do think they're short staff, but we we'll have to get into it to rectify it so it doesn't continue. Because I, I, the do-it-yourselfers and those who are taking pride in their yards, I don't want them discouraged from doing yard work because then it sits out there week after week after week and that doesn't help in what we're trying to do. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention to you, if you head west on Claire Kona Koi, some of you may have already noticed, um, Okoe has uh, approved a very large project that is apartments, the Winn Dixie, and a you know large first rate uh, commercial strip there that has the potential to bring some more of the amenities and shops and. Um, variety of grocery stores. I'm happy to hear it is Winn Dixie after we lost the one on Hiawassee. They're coming back to the market. So if you get a chance to go that way, it's really not that far. And I'd be curious if, if some of the members feel that that would be helpful, even though it's in Okoe, but at least it's not that far from us in North Pine Hill. Okay. I've, I've got uh, Dr. Nichols' hands up. Yeah, thank you for that. Um... Patricia and Commissioner Namor. I wanted to speak on behalf of the Laurel Hills community, which is, uh, they're not here tonight, but I've been um, speaking with the property manager of the Laurel Hills community, the condominiums, and they have quite a bit of yard waste and baggage, garbage bags that has been, they've been left out as well as um, cut down trees and branches. And I've sent several photographs to, to 311 uh, and I have not had a response back yet. I know that she has done that as well. So we're hoping to um, have someone take a look at that soon because the, 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 the bushes, the tree branches are, they're, they're getting brown now. And with the heat outside and the kids outside, hopefully there's not going to be any sparks, if you will. So that's definitely a concern because it's been there for at least over a month and they're still there. I want to make two, two comments, uh, Commissioner. One is that her question was, do we want to see an increase in fee in order to get uh, the service that we thought we were supposed to get? And then the other question is, and now that we're talking about these bags, right there, Commissioner, at North Nursery, and that fence that goes up into North Nursery, that's about 20 bags mm -hmm. that has been there for over months. And I've been intending to take a pitch and send it there. So can you please make a note that uh, someone has dumped about 20 trash bags up, in, up, up into North Nursery entrance. 
So I don't know, do I need to send that to 311 or call? Because that is not a pickup spot. No. So solid waste would not go pick that up because that's a vacant property. How do we get rid of those? Well, are you talking about, a, are you talking, to, I'm not sure where you're, um, not North nursery. Lane somewhere. Knox, Knox, oh, Knox, Knox nursery. nursery. Right. That's on Hawassi, okay. almost directly in front of Highland Oaks and Hawassi Oaks, that Knox Nursery. Oh, okay. yeah. By the, by the gate there. Yeah. By the gate. There's about 20, okay. 30 bags there. No, I'm, let, me turn, let me turn it in for you tomorrow. I'll Thank you. To do that. Um, Thank we you. might get a little more response out of them. We've had challenges with them, even our office calling, and that's why I asked the question to see how many of you have been dealing with it and how responsive. And so it helps me to hear that the 311 is still sitting there after 30 days. That's not acceptable. Yeah, I talked to Mr. Gregory. Commissioner, well, what I would like to know is if this is all over Orange County or are we just experienced this in Pine Hills? No, I can tell you it's happening just as bad up in the Wakiva Springs area, but I can't speak to other parts of the county because I don't receive those calls. And to that statement, that Dr. Nichols, I didn't want to uh, cut you short, but that's in District 6. So you would need to address your concerns with Commissioner Sipplin. I'm sorry, but that's in District 6. So that's something that we need to think about. Uh, you homeowners need to think about. Uh, do you want to increase? Because I'm sure that that uh, discussion is, is going to come up with the Board of County Commission. Like they say, pay me now, pay me later. I don't know what, but anyway. But thank you for, for, that, for that conversation, for calling in. Is there any more questions? Yeah, I would be interested to know if it's a staffing issue. Well, I think. Um, it is absolutely, it's, I think they're short staff right now. I agree. But there was that second part of my question, if they're picking up enough for you, because I've personally had, we're all put bags out and they only take half of it. Yeah, we've so had I was that curious too. if they're not picking up at all, or if they're also not taking all of your waste. Yeah. Um, at one point, uh, we had a problem with the, uh, um, and I don't know if this still continues, but some of the newer drivers, perhaps they're newer, new to Pine Hills, but some people were paying them to pay extra to pick up their stuff so they wouldn't sit there. And uh, we were not paying them. And finally, I had to flag down the drivers and tell them, I'm sorry, we don't, in, you know, in, in uh, Orange County, you'll get paid a salary to pick up the trash. You don't get you don't get yep. extra money to pick up the trash. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Thank you. So were you able to get the answers? I mean, any type of feedback commission that you was, was looking for? I think so. I, I think um, the experiences that I've heard from Pine Hills and Wakiva Springs are similar. And, and we certainly need to do something about it because again, if you get out there and you make your property better and help to improve um, property values for an entire neighborhood, this is very discouraging if we have to look at uh, lawn waste sitting out there week after week after yeah. week. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for helping. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more comments, observation? By the, uh, by the commission. The just one yes. thing. Uh, thank you, Madam President and uh, Commissioner. I um, I was coming up powers earlier today, and you know, uh, just to chime in, uh, I seen you know a couple of trash bags just sitting right there on the sidewalk, and I was like, okay, we just had Earth Day, and you know, we cleaned up a lot of the community in uh, in Pine Hills, and it you know it looked real nice after we left from out there, and then right after the trash bags, you see you know, a poster on the pole uh, for Pine Hills Earth Day. And it's like, uh, how could people, you know, just just toss the trash out and then there's a sign about cleaning up, you know, the Pine Hills community right after the trash bags. It's like no care in the world at all. So it's, it's definitely something I believe in, you know, in my opinion, that has to change about the situation. And that's all a part of, and you are absolutely right, Mr. Williams, and, and that's all a part of something that the council is working on as well. Uh, I know we do a cleanup, 
but we also working on education. That's something that uh, Ms. Myra and the education committee and the beautification committee has been working diligently on is getting out this coloring book to our uh, elementary kids to teach them at an early age uh, about anti-litter, that littering is just not the right thing to do. So that's another component of the beautification committee, not only just clean up behind, uh, uh, clean up, but to educate. So th that's a very good point. And we are working on that. The next phase of this beautification committee is to educate that it is not okay to litter. And to that point, thank you for bringing it up. To that point, uh, Commission, glad you're here. That is the ordinance on the book. That's a fine, that's the ordinance against litter. How do we get that ordinance on the book implemented? Because th th there's a um, fine. It's probably, well, it's probably law enforcement, and I would agree. They've been, they're lax about that. They're lax about, you know, ticketing our speeders. The, the two biggest issues, complaints that I hear are speeding and, um, you know, solid waste concerns. And so you're right. We need better enforcement. And so perhaps... Um, we could have some sort of a forum uh, with the sheriff and with the with the two commissioners and, and because it really is going to take working together to solve that issue and of course maybe the school board members i agree with you that some of this has to be dealt with the children and 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 that they just stop throwing things out it, it just has to stop because it it brings down our values and it gets people um, a wrong impression of our community. And being a former school board member, perhaps that could be an in role for Dr. Nichols, uh, for you to be able to uh, help her in the direction and, and Myra and those that's on the uh, beautification committee to get this uh, coloring book in the school system. Perhaps you could direct them into the direction, maybe not tonight, but who they need to uh, talk to with the school board to uh, get this initiative going. Yeah, it's the same kind of process as the county. I mean, um, you could go down before their meeting and, and speak and open comment. But typically something like that is really control, controlled Excuse me, by the principal. And so a visit to the principal is good. You know, I believe that when, when they come back to school in August and you're dealing with all the initial uh, expectations and rules and procedures, you know, not littering could absolutely be part of that first week of school. So personal visits to the principals in the area where you're seeing the greatest uh, littering would certainly bear some fruit. Okay. Thank you for the insight. Anybody else, any more comments? We are close to our time. Is it Ken? We are um, close to our time, We're over our time, but go ahead on a good conversation yeah. tonight. Ken? I want to remind people that we're going to be having the parade on December 11th um, up the Pine Hills Trail. And we're now looking for people who'd like to help Safe Neighborhood and our other organizations contact um, the churches and businesses. So I, if you have uh, some time and don't mind using the telephone, get in contact with me or Rosalind if she has not already mentioned it because my internet's been blinking on and off and I didn't hear the first part of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ken. Thank you, Commissioner, for, uh, for being on the line. Unless you have any more comments, but the Commissioner, I'm gonna move on to the... Anybody else? Thank you. Charlene, my clerk of the court. Ms. Patricia, office. can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. I'm sorry. Yes, how are you all? Good evening. Thank you. We can hear you. Charlene. Charlene, you are yes, mute now. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, yes, ma'am. Thank you all. Good evening to everyone. Um, I'm Charlene Gatlin on behalf of Tiffany Moore, Clerk Tiffany Moore Russell's office with the Orange County Clerk of Court. So I just wanted to let you know about uh, a couple of things that have been happening within um, the Clerk of Court's office. Um, first, you know, in Tallahassee, we had a super priority bill, Senate Bill 838, that passed um, unanimously in both chambers, which allows the clerk office to have the opportunity to fix their budget model. Um, for years, the clerk has had a very 
wacky budget model and COVID really explode, um, exposed that, you know, it's, it's an issue, especially in regards to um, responding to, you know, natural disasters and, you know, unprecedented like pandemic. So it allows them to provide carry over, carryovers in their budget as well as, um, you know, have reserves which they haven't been able to do before. So we are excited oh, okay. um, right good. now to have our super priority bill passed up in Tallahassee and now it's on the governor's desk waiting for approval. Um, we have an upcoming event, you know, this month, like Peggy said, is Mental Health Awareness Month. So on May the 19th, we are hosting My Health Matters Mental Health Awareness uh, webinar. We have partnered with the Mental Health Association of Central Florida, as well as the Heart of Florida United Way and Orange Connect. They will provide um, presentations about local resources that are available to our community for individuals who are dealing with um, mental difficulties um, during this time and connect them with the appropriate resources. Um, so the Mental um, Health Association will present on workplace uh, fatigue and all of the, all the, and coping mechanisms. Um, as you know, we're dealing with so much due to COVID that it's just like a snowball effect with the work and home life balance. So they'll be doing a presentation on that. Um, Orange County has a new program called Orange Connect, which is a virtual platform where you complete a survey and um, based on the answers of your survey, um, it will connect you to providers mental health um, substance abuse providers um, to get you those services. Very and good. the Heart United Way will talk about its 2-1-1 system. So we wanted to, you know, bring that to your attention that that event is happening on May the 19th via Zoom. So we encourage you all to register for that and it will be happening from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on May the 19th. Um, also, we had a legal matters forum on wills, trust, and probate last month, and it was very highly received. We had about 294 registrants, um, about 150 attendees um, during that particular web webinar about probate. So we had awesome attorneys, um, attorney Lazandra Randolph and attorney Tracy Zanko, as well as Judge Munyan. Uh, who talked about the probate process and, you know, vital information for our community at this time as to how to, how to handle that process because it's very convoluted and very um, di difficult if you don't know the process for yourself. So that webinar is available on the myorangeclerk.com website as well as YouTube, and it's available in our video section on the Orange County Clerk of Court website. So I thank you all for the opportunity to let you know about some of the updates that are happening with the clerk's office. And we always appreciate all the great work that Pine Hills Community Council is doing in the community. Um, off the clerk's priorities, um, also the Experience Christian Center um, is having a grocery giveaway on May 15th. And we have partnered, I'm a member of that church and we have partnered with the Pine Hills Community Council as well as FRC, Care Plus, um, and there's um, a couple of other entities and services that will be provided during that grocery giveaway. So from 9.30 in the morning to about 12.30, Farm Share will be the one providing the food as well as for Roots. Um, so they will be out there um, bringing enough food and groceries to feed about 500 families within the Pine Hills and the surrounding communities. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention while I had the floor. Thank you, Ms. Patricia. Thank you. And I know it's 8-11, but I cannot go without uh, recognizing uh, uh, Dr. Itler, and he's not here. But Landra, they're having, they're getting sure a huge program. Me. I think he is here. Dr. Dr. Itler, are you here? No, please okay. make that announcement about the first annual Haitian American program that's coming up on May the 16th, I think. Yes, they are. It's actually May the 18th and it's actually okay. Haitian Flag Day. Thank um, you. And the city of Orlando is actually doing a first annual um, Haitian Heritage um, 
business. It's actually a forum where they're going to have business people in. Um, they're going to be doing, be talking to the business owners, the uh, some of the people involved in the art. Um, they're going to be talking about culture. Um, and it is going to be a Zoom call and you can register on the City of Orlando website. Um, I don't have that link right here in front of me. But if you go into the GEC, um, Greater Haitian American Chamber of Commerce page, the information in the flyer is there for registration. And if you, you know, this is really an opportunity. This is actually the first time mm -hmm. any county or city entity that I know of has actually recognized um, Haitian Heritage Month. So they are extremely excited about this event um, at the Haitian Chamber. I am a, an advisor and uh, I'm going to have an opportunity to do a testimonial. So if you all actually know anyone of Haitian descent, this is really an opportunity for the Haitian community to shine, to actually show up in large numbers and support this event because this is the first time it's ever been done. So really hoping that we can get a lot of community support um, Thank you. in this upcoming event. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Itler is a part of our board. So I could not let this opportunity go without recognizing him and his services done with the Pine Hills Community Council. And we don't support him in the Greater Haitian American Chamber of Commerce first event that they're, that they're, they'll be hosting Zoom online. Did I miss anything, anybody? I know it's 8.15. And we normally go from 6.30 until 8 o'clock. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here. Join the council. Once you leave here, go on our uh, Facebook, on our Facebook page, on our website, info at pinehills, pinehills.info. Go on our, our website, come a member of the council. There's several committees there. Join our committees. We have several mm -hmm. committees that we would love to have you part of. And uh, thank you again for being on the Zoom call, hanging in there. Thank you for the watching Facebook and staying with us on Facebook. Board members, did I miss any announcement? So we, we can wind this thing, wind it down. Well, I will just take the time to say that we have an upcoming food drive um, on Thursday as well at our regular 6001 Silver Star Road. This is United Foundation of Central Florida. Thank you all for participating. To date, we have provided over 850,000 meals and growing 10 months in, and we're going to take it to a year. Thank you all that have participated, partnered, Pioneers Community Council, and everyone on this call that has given some support. May 6, 10 to 11.30. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, good people. I have, a, I, have a, I have something. I have a poem that was written by a Haitian, uh, a former Haitian council member. And uh, I, I'd like to, to get it out to somebody for Haitian. Is there a, an artistic um, an individual who's in charge of... Uh, for Haitian month, uh, who looking or look at some for the Haitian culture, looking at the art, uh, at the art or, or the written uh, have, art. Uh, fact, there, there's quite a few events uh, that are actually coming up. And I know there is an art event that's coming up, but you can definitely get Dr. Uh, Bonome's information from Patricia and talk to him about trying to get that submitted to the right people because I'm not sure who that will be. Yeah, it's a, it's a, an extra, it's a super, uh, I'm going through my files and I came across it and I thought this needs to be uh, out there. So if I could get a name of a person, I would appreciate it. Dr. B. Okay, I will, I will forward you Dr. B information, Bettina. Okay, okay. well, I, I have Dr. B's information. I thought there might be an individual who was working more with the, the cultural, aspects of the artists the and he can and he can and he can guide you in that direction because he's in contact with all those people in the Haitian community who could actually give you that information there's actually quite a few of them but um he would definitely have to give that to you okay. all right thank you um yeah appreciate it okay good people I think I've covered everything this has been another good meeting thank you for your uh participation Next month, June, we are looking forward to having uh, Ms. Dennis with, with the Embrace uh, foster care program to uh, be with us next month. So come back with us next month and learn more about what's going on in the Pine Hills community. Join the council, good information, a good group to support. We're, we're doing great works in the Pine Hills community and we're ready to continue to do what we're doing. Okay.
Thank right. you. Great meeting. Bye-bye. Good night. Good evening, everyone. Good night.